find the centroid of an eighth of a circle with radius r. We're going to use polar coordinates to do this. Definition of a centroid says that x bar is the integral of x dA over the integral of dA. Now what we want to do is find out what dA is, looks, what dA looks like in polar coordinates. Let's consider a differential element that looks like one wedge of the circle. So we're going to differentiate d theta out the, act, the whole length of the radius r. Well, this comes to a point at the one end and has a height at the other end, so it looks kind of like a triangle. The height of the triangle is given by the arc length covered by that d theta. Remember, arc length is um, s equals r theta. In this case, we're, our arc length looks like r d theta because the height is, the angle is just d theta. This by the way, is going to make sure that we have to use radians because arc length only works in radians. So if the height of my triangle is given by r d theta, then I can say that the area of my triangle, dA, is going to be one half times the base, r, times the height of my triangle, r d theta. dA is one half r squared d theta. Now the other thing you need to know is what x is. Back from the formula for the centroid of the eighth of a circle. We need to know what these values for x and y are. In our case, remember that the definition of x is the distance to the centroid of the differential element. So what we've got right here is a little triangle that goes out the length of the arc of the circle. The centroid of my triangle is going to be a third of the way from the big end of this triangle. So right about here. What I want to know is, what's this value for x? Well, if this is a third of the way out my triangle, then this is two-thirds of r for any value of theta. So x is going to be two-thirds r cosine theta, and similarly y would be two-thirds r sine theta. In both cases, you have your same dA. Now we can plug in and actually integrate. x bar is the integral of x dA. x is two-thirds r cosine theta. dA was one-half r squared d theta. And the limits of integration here are what theta goes from. This is an eighth of a circle. So theta is going to go from zero to pi over four. This is not what x does. This is what theta does. And then we're going to divide by the same thing, zero to pi over four of one-half r squared d theta. Make sure that you remember to check that your integral dA has got to have to be the area of the circle. So when we get to the bottom here, we're going to want to make sure that the area of the, the whole circle would be pi r squared. We'd like to make sure that what we end up with here in the denominator is an eighth of that. That's how we'll know that we got our dA right. r does not change d theta, so you can pull that out. Two-thirds times one-half is one-third. I've got three r's, so r cubed. The integral from zero to pi over four. All I've got left here is cosine theta d theta. And in my denominator, I can pull out the r, one-half r squared again, and I have the integral from zero to pi over four of theta, d theta. That looks like a third divided by a half is two-thirds r. Integral of cosine is sine theta. Integral d theta is just theta, and both of these change from 0 to pi over 4. I only have one value of r here because I've got r cubed in the top and r squared in the denominator, so two of those radiuses will cancel. That gives you 2 thirds r, 1 over the square root of 2 divided by pi over 4, or 4r four times the square root of 2 over 3 pi. We can do the same thing for our y bar y bar is going to be the integral from 0 to pi over 4. We're still doing d theta, but now we're going to use the y value. So I'm going to have 2 thirds r sine theta times 1 half r squared d theta divided by the same, very self-same area. The only thing that changes here is that the integral of sine is negative cosine instead of sine. This is 2 thirds of r times minus cosine of pi over 4 minus a negative cosine of zero, so plus cosine of zero. Remember, cosine of zero is equal to one. 
divided by pi over 4 minus 0. That looks like 8r over 3 pi minus 4 over square root of 2 r over 3 pi. The second part is almost the same except we're dealing with an offset and a negative sign. If you plug r equal 2 in here just to get a feel for whether we're dealing with numbers that are correct or not, we can show that y bar is equal to 0.497 and x bar is equal to 1.2 and those are very reasonable numbers.